let's see the properties of a repository service. Now first of all, what are the things which we need to take care when we are creating a repository service? Okay, let me start the step of the repository service creation and then we'll talk about the various properties in that. So I'll click on the domain here. Actions, new, power center repository service, give a name. Now here there should be certain naming standards followed based on the organization and project you're in. You have to understand that and give the name. For us, for now, I'll give test. Underscore test. Okay, description, what it is all about. As I have only one domain, I'll give only one domain. Even if you click on browse, you'll get the same thing. Right? License. What license do you have? Uh, or what license is applicable for this uh, repository service. Now, if you have a drop down here, you would get a question. Can we have more than one license for a single installation? In some of the projects, there will be functions or there will be modules in which a certain kind of feature is not required. And in some it is. Okay, so let's assume as of today, we don't have a functionality of uh, creating the IDQ services, okay? But the other, other module in the same company, which is using the similar shared environment, needs the uh, IDQ services and let's assume pushed on optimization as well, okay? Now, we can always go and ask Informatica Corporation for the plugins or the updates for it. The other restriction we have is it should be available only for the latest module. We don't want to give it to all the streams which are sharing this environment, right? In that case, you can add an additional license which Informatica provides and assign that particular license which will have all the common attributes across both the modules and the additional ones here. So in the drop down you get, you would have that particular license features enabled in turn which will automatically enable for this repository service and the integration service. Right, so select that node. Now, node here, okay, I'll talk about this when we go to the grids part. So let's, let's select the node one here, which is the only one I have. I click next, database type. See this, the type of databases on which the repository metadata can be created are of four types SQL Server, Oracle, Sybase and DB2 okay in domain it is only the first three username you will connect you will give the database username on which you want to create the metadata service now that username and password should have the grand DBA options connection string on which we are connecting it to and the code page now, how will we decide what the code page is? Or first of all, what is a code page? Code page is the way in which the data is read by the hardware or the technical systems. Right now, if you have uh, any of the languages, let's assume Spanish. If your data is coming up in Spanish, how does the system identify that it is Spanish? If you do not choose the right code page, it will give you junk characters when it is loading the data. Okay, now code pages is a conclusion or research which we have to do before we start even creating a data model or the ETL design because um, any changes to the ETL design or the data model as part of this language settings would impact very hugely if the process is already in place and you're creating a new language now. For example, let's say you are working in a project which is in US, obviously English is the language, so you can go with the basic MS Windows Latin or the UTF-8 Unicode which is the standard. Let's say your organization is merging with or overtaking, acquiring some other company which is in China. Okay, now that company, though it is of the same function, assuming it's a uh, automobile company, the data processing within that is happening in their own language which is Chinese, right? Now, 
if we are getting Chinese and English together, what is a code page which is compatible? We have to do a POC, which is nothing but a proof of concept, to see if all the scenarios of that particular data are being managed or not. And we have to choose that particular code page. Okay, this is if you're doing it for the first time and you are aware that you are having a multilingual data processing to be done. Okay, now let's say we are already an existing company, an existing project, and now there is a new language setting coming up. Then what you have to do? Then you have to create a new repository service with that particular code page on which this language can be recognized and read create an integration service on top of that particular repository service and assign the jobs which will process this multi-language data into this particular repository and the integration service. So this way we are not cracking the existing setup and we are also answering the new requirement on the basis of the language processing. Okay, now that's the second option and the obvious, obvious answer basically. Now, in the recent past, when you go to the Informatica Corporation with a valid service uh, license which you have, and you tell them that I have XYZ issues with the code page, then they would give you a package which is a combination of multi-language multi uh, reading data processing plugin which you have to install and um, process the data. Okay. For now, let's assume it's the default Windows Latin. We can leave it as it is. But in any standard where we have only English data processing, it will be either Ms. Windows Latin or the UTF-8. Now, the other point which we have to remember here is, if you're doing the installation, obviously the database should be available first for all of this to work. And at the database level, what is the code page which is being set? During the installation of your database on the server box, it will prompt you with one of these code page options. The code page which you've given at the database and at Informatica should be same. Okay. Table space name, it's not mandatory. If you want this particular metadata to be created on a specific table space, we can give it. Else it's not mandatory as you can see it. And if you're creating the uh, repository service for the first time where there is no content existing then you would select no content exists only then it will start loading or creating your metadata tables into the database if you say content already exists where does it exist it exists on this database type with this username password and on this connection string if it is already existing and if you want to reuse the same thing as a new repository service, whatever details you have given, the system will uh, try to connect to it using these details and try to reuse them. If it is the first time, you still have to provide all these details. Instead of checking the first option, you have to sec check the second option, which is no content exists. Then, based on the license option which we selected here, whatever features are enabled, based on that, the metadata content is created on the database okay enable global repository enable version control now these two are the properties which are usually checked for majority of the implementations now what is a global repository global repository is the objects which you create under these repository can be used as sh shortcuts outside the repository as well okay once it is done you may not revert it to local what is local? Local is which is only accessible by the people who it's not about the developers who access it, it's about the objects within the repository. The objects within the repository cannot be created as shared okay, or reusable basically. Version control. Version control started in Informatica from version 7 and uh, in the beginning there were a lot of issues in version 7 but as and when we moved on obviously it got improved and in the current version from 9, 9x to 9.5 uh, 
uh, it has improved a lot and majority of the scenarios are uh, handled within the versioning. Now we all know what is versioning. Versioning is to uh, maintain the changes which are done to a particular code and uh, you need to enable this here in the repository setting when you are creating it. Now let's assume you did not do it. Okay, you forgot to do it. You clicked on finish. Your metadata got created. Now how will you enable that? Okay, in the previous version still 8.6 if you forgot to do this there is no other way. You have to delete this repository service, create a new one, make sure you check it and enable it. In the latest one you can disable or enable it based on the requirement you have. Okay, I'll show you how to do that. Now the moment you click on finish, if it is content exists, it will just check the database connection and it will say success. If you click on no content exists, it will start creating the metadata table at the database level and finishes it once all the tables are created. Okay, and right after that, right after you say that your, I mean once you know that your power center repository is available your operating mode which you see here will be by default in exclusive mode. What is an exclusive mode? Exclusive mode is a lock mode. If as an administrator if you're doing some um, let's say plugin installations or server restart and shutdown or things like that you would make this into exclusive mode. Exclusive is nothing but locking. Once you lock or make this exclusive, nobody from the developer team or whoever have access apart from the administrator can change anything at the client level. At the tool level you have those four tools. You cannot change anything at those tool level once you change it to the exclusive mode. Okay. Now if you notice I have global repository and versioning controlled checked in right now. Now it was normal earlier. Let me start it over. So it is normal right now. I'll change it to exclusive. Every time I switch to normal to exclusive, exclusive to normal, I need to restart the services. The moment I click on OK, you'll get a prompt that your service will be restarted. I click OK to it. It will disable it and make the repository into an exclusive mode. Let me open the client tool in the meantime. I'll show you how that locking works. Okay, it's an exclusive mode. Both are enabled. Right. If you try to connect to this now, okay, fail to connect because it's running in exclusive mode, which is lock. If you're already connected, let's say you're already there connected, then you'd still get a red color bulb here on the repository, the green color icon saying it is on the exclusive mode. Now, whenever you see the exclusive mode, I would get an option to revoke this. If it is um, in the normal mode first and if you did not check it then you would get an option. If you notice this now there will be a small uh, statement mentioned here. I'll show it to you. Okay, may not be reverted to local which means I've already enabled that, right? I'm not able to revert it back. Enable version control. Once the repository is versioned, then you cannot reverse it back. So in my case here, my repository service, both were made it as global and versioning is enabled. That's the reason I'm not able to switch it back, okay? Whenever the repository goes into the exclusive mode, the workflows will be impacted and they'll be failed. Okay, so that is the reason whenever there is a change to the 
plugins or status updates or restart of the machines it is done beforehand with the communication to the whole team so that they can save all their work and plan it accordingly okay now once it is in exclusive mode you can switch it back to normal mode now this is not only manual there are situations where the server or the service manager or the informatica service itself changes its operating mode to exclusive what are those scenarios whenever there is a contention from the database side about the connection or the way data is being read the system automatically moves into the exclusive mode this does not happen frequently that's one of a scenario and once you revert it to normal it should be fine so whenever it gets into that exclusive mode all you have to do is come here change it to normal mode and the services will be restarted and it will be up and running no it should be for the whole repository you cannot have it at the folder level but at the folder level what you can do is if you want to let me show you that I mean this is just a workaround at the folder level let's say for this you want to lock it edit see the permissions tab here okay you can add a group here which will contain all the users and remove the write and execute and you have something called a status here you can keep it as frozen do not allow deploy to replace allow deploy to replace this is your code freeze which means you cannot copy any code from the um, other folders to this folders okay but as such locking for making any changes you need to go to permissions this status here is for deployment we will talk about the status during the deployment groups and versioning but I mean as you can see you have only two options allow deploy to replace which means let's assume this is a QA environment and you're copying your code from development environment to QA environment then you can freeze both the folders and say only the deployment should work rest of the changes done by the development team should not work and if you click on this it is completely frozen and you cannot deploy it out as well okay the other way is add a group create a group within your folder structure add everybody into that folder into that group okay select that group and remove the permissions of write and execute to them okay you can do that okay so that's about normal and exclusive mode now you're back to the repository service